Hello, my name is Zaurus, and this is Planescape Torments. And let's see, what was I doing? Uh, yeah, I have to go to Merriman, find the veil. First things first. Vivian. I don't think I've talked to Vivian yet. <laughs> this tall, elegant woman with her sharp features and regal demeanor is a striking example of aristocratic beauty. Her clothes appear to be spun of silver thread, and a small vial dangles from her necklace. She's perfumed with an exotic erotic scent that seems to draw you towards her. Hello! Greetings, my name is Vivian. I presume I am being summoned? No, I had some questions. What are you doing here? Aside from our work as a student here, I'm looking for something. Actually, you wouldn't happen to have smelled it, would you? Smelled it? Yes. I have a particular scent that seems to have gone wandering. It is somewhat difficult to keep in one place. I hope that someone did not take it by accident. Do you have a know with the ladies around here? So, by any chance, have you smelled it somewhere? You smell quite nice right now, you know. Yes, yes, and I thank you for your compliment. But I assure you, this particular, particular aroma is nothing compared to my personal scent. How can a scent go wandering? I meant to infer that it has been, that it has been taken. The ladies here are a bit jealous at times. I have been known to take my various perfumes for themselves. This time, though, someone has absconded with my own personal scent. I worked on that scent, perfected it, and now, poof, it is gone. I need not bear such annoyances. I want the scent back. I want it now. How would you know that you found it? You know a best smell, I assure you, it's just quite striking, especially to men. I can help you. I assume I don't wish to impose. Oh no, a position I expect a reward, as usual. As I should have expected from your brutish mercenary appearance. Very well, recover my scent and I shall aid you with yours. Mine? Yes, yours. With foul with vinegary smell. It's in your skin too. No bathing will remove that stink. How would you do this and how could it benefit me? Charisma of course. Duh. To answer your first question, I possess certain skills, magical in nature, which I shan't elaborate upon further, which allow me to create and change one's scent. And the benefits? You simply cannot deny the fact that the smell of a man or woman plays an important part in how well one is received. Whether you've been told so or not, I'm quite certain people are at least a tad put off by that deathly aroma of yours. It might increase your charisma considerably to smell a bit better, you know? Very well, I will look for your sense. Okay, tell me about the uh, echo. Uh, yeah, again, Dlora. And the fill, not something interesting. Uh, you know what the tenth is? No. Fine. Um, Grace. How may I help you? Yeah, I spoke to nine of the students, as you asked, but I could not find the tenth. And you could not find the tenth student? How curious. I think the tenth student is me, in which case I've spoken to all of them. Or I think Lewis is the tenth student, in his own way. Very well, and your thoughts? I've learned what it means to aspire to be a sensate, and that it's better to go in search of experience rather than have it come to you. Very well, I will travel with you, if you still desire my company. I do. 
verschaffen wollen. You couldn't possibly understand. I wish you would fall from great height. I might even bump it off myself. Cat fights. Uh, all right, we have her now, and we can go and fight. It's good to be journeying again. The brothel was a learning experience, but I think it was time I moved on. Well, that's if you do think so. Um, yeah, let's go find Merriman. Through observation, sensation, and experience, the truth of the multiverse shall be revealed. I'm gone. All right. Actually, uh, I do want to talk to Grace a bit more, get to know her, but maybe later. Same with Dacon, we were uh, going through the. I'm gone. All right. Through the whole uh, Done. thing with talking to him about the unbroken circle. And I wish to continue that. Merriman! There you are, you little fat ball guy. Uh, yeah, I have something to to, uh, to uh, wipe your mind. Here, take this mug. It holds the dark bird of a cantus, a sliver of ice from the river sticks. It should wipe your memories clean. Memory, memor memory, memory. Merriman takes the mug and removes a piece of paper from his pocket. He tilts the mug back and takes the ice to his mouth. It melts instantly, leaving him with a somewhat startled expression. Merriman looks at you, confused, then at the paper in his hands. He reads aloud. Congratulations, Merriman, you've begun again. Thank the man in front of you and give him the key in your pocket. Speak to Splinter, the man at the door, to this building, for more information. He looks at you again, and looks to you again. Well, good to see him, I owe you thanks, good sir. Here, take this key. I'd best find this Splinter fellow and find what's going on. Thanks, Merriman. Good luck. May my faith lend me strength. I'm gone. It's nice to have a healer in the party. All right. So now we can go to the Laura. I'm gone. Get her this key. And then get information on Echo. Because she won't talk to me about it till I I'm gone. bring the key. Besides Cyrus, no. Echo, no. There, Delora. Did I say Dolores again? Ah. Did you find him? Has he returned? Has he agreed to return the keys to my heart? Yes, I have the keys to your heart. Here they are. Updated my journal. At last! As she takes the keys from the grasp, her hand brushes against yours. Her skin is dry, but icy to the touch, like cold metal. This will be, will be of great use to me. I thank you. Of course, and my reward? Laura nods and removes a pair of bracelets from a pouch at her side. These are yours now. You have earned them. Uh, I was hoping to learn more about your nature. Merriman never taught me much regarding my construction. I know little of your inner workings of my body, much as you likely know little of yours. Overly though, I'm a human woman in all respects, save for the texture and temperature of my flesh. Does it satisfy your curiosity? What about your mind, your emotions? Its functions are as, as much a mystery to me as any humans. When I first came to this place, I did not understand emotions nor have any of my own. I have feelings now, but I'm only beginning to understand them. What do the keys do exactly? I can only assume that Merriman made the keys so there would be no risk of me drawing away from, from him before he had tired of his experiment. But, uh, now that they are in my possession, I am free to develop and possess my own emotions. 
Do you know anything about Vivian's sense? My journal. I will assume you mean a personal scent, which she alleges has been stolen from her by one of the prostitutes here. I do not know with whom it now rests. You may wish to ask Nanny, however. She sees much of what occurs here. Really, Nanny again. Hmm. Alright, I will, uh... Some sense be stolen. Uh, yeah, not that interested. It's it's, it's magic, magic, thing magic. Nanny, I have to talk to you again. Where are you, Juliet? Do you have anything interesting to tell me? I'm gone. No, probably not. I have too many people following me around. Uh, hang on, guys. I'll park you here. Done. I'm going to look Done. for Nanny. Nanny. My nanny, my dear. That's Vivian. Is that Nanny? Yes, that's Nanny. All right. Oh, what? What? Oh, I was standing in her. Ooh. Well, my good sir, I'm Nanny, and how are you this fine? Oh, we've met before. I'm sorry, I knew you looked familiar. She's such a ditzy little thing. Cute, though. Yeah, talk with you. My journal. Maybe, yeah, so that mean me and Marissa sneak out of Vivian's room one night. Now, I'm not saying she took it. But I know Marissa's not a very nice person, and she was sound suspicious, huh? I'll go, go ask her about it. Fine, thank you, Nanny. Done. Marissa. All right. Marissa. Where are you, my dear? Ah, there you are. Ah, bam, bam. Um. Yeah. We, we you were seen sneaking away from Vivian's chambers. My journal. Yes, I've been known to creep into Vivian's chamber for some of her perfumes. Though I doubt you'll meet another here who hasn't. If you're implying that I've got a personal sound, well, feel free to sniff around. You'll not find it on me or in my chambers. I assure you. Perhaps whoever took my weapons in the veil took Vivian's scent as well. Huh. Alright. Done. I suspect it is this guy. Oh, oh I completely forgot to ask about Echo. Dolora. Yeah, can you tell me about Echo? Yes, her name is Echo, her voice. And in fact, her every means of communication was stolen and destroyed. Echo's words once wooed away, wooed away the paramour of the goblin Paramisha. Paramisha, in a jealous rage, tore away Echo's voice. Sealed it within a crystal vial. And hurled it into a mega galamaga draga small. Echo's voice is forever lost to her. Only another new voice returned to her the ability to communicate once more. Notice because I spoke to Paramishas Paramur myself once. Um Yeah, can you tell me more about the scent? 
many. Done. Really, I have to go. Echo. Greetings. Ask some questions. Is your name Echo? Updated my journal. She nods, smiling pleasantly. Can I ask why you can't communicate? She sighs softly. Not. Is your voice stolen? Updated my journal. She nods vigorously, clasping her hands together and smiling at you. Do you know of any way to get your voice back? She shakes her head, her face wrought with frustration. She still looks at you pleadingly, as if expecting an answer. I can try to return your voice. For a price. Echo frowns, narrowing her eyes at you. She looks, looks away for a moment, sighs, and then nods to you. Still then, I look for something that will give you a voice. For a while. I did my journal. And I already have that with me. I've gotten this fiend's tongue for you. She raises her eyebrow and gives you a skeptical look. I told that should you place it, place it in your mouth, you will gain the ability to communicate. She nods and takes the bottle from you. She gingerly picks out the severed tongue from the briny solution. After staring at it for a moment in disgust, places it into her mouth. Suddenly, her eyes widen, and there is a burst of reddish light from between her lips. Are you alright? Echo opens her mouth, closes it, then opens it once more, and speaks. I... I can speak again. Oh, sorry, I don't... Damn thee to the darkest of pits, thou stench ridden worm. Kneel before me in supplication, insects. Huh? Echo yelps, and covers her mouth with both hands. Her eyes are wide with panic. It must be the fiend's tongue. Updated my journal. She slowly takes her hands away from her mouth, nodding. It seems I must devour thy frail shell and consign thy soul to the abyss for all eternity. Thou shalt serve as my bell for all till the plains grind to a halt. Thou art mine, mine, mine. Echo shuts her mouth again and begins, begins to softly, quietly weep. Wait, try using these divas tears. They should soothe the tongue's cursing. Updated my journal. She nods, smiling, and takes the vial from you. Echo places a few of the sparkling blue drops onto her tongue. I, I believe the tears are working. Yes, they are. I can speak in my own voice once more. Oh, how I thank you. Echo squeezes your hand and bows her head gratefully, her eyes welling with tears of joy. Yes, you're welcome. Now, about my reward. It's 500. I could not swipe the last of these away. She reached it to her purse and presents several rolls of parchment red copper coins to you. Reward, sir, and justly deserve. I'm happy to help, but the deepest tear cost me quite a bit. Another thousand. Nice. Of course, here you are. Yeah, I'm trying to find 15 cents. Do you know where it might be? I have no idea. Lee, have you spoken to Nanny? I'm trying to find Mrs. Crimson Field. Do you know where it might be? No idea. I've spoken to Nanny. Do you know anything about the Ralph of Puzzlewell? In fact, I do. Um, does she exist? She has children. Updated my job. Why would I find them? One of them is here, at times. Kasai Seris. She's a child of rivals, though she's loath to accept the fact. Who could blame her? I've never gotten her to admit it, though I'm sure it is true. The flames grow within me. Alright. Yo, mother bodies. Do you know anything about the uh, stone stuff? Uh, do you know what this little cube like toy is? The Modron. Its appearance identical in every aspect, but size the object in your hands brings once, twice, then speaks. The object is a portal cube. The user is to position the appendages of the portal cube in such a manner that it will activate. Once activated, the portal cube will transport the user to whatever destination it was turned to during its creation. Uh, was the proper position? We did not have that information. Over 97% of all portal cubes function in a slightly different manner. We were not present at the construction of the subject portal cube. 
nor have we ever been given instructions as to its use. Should the subject desire to utilize a portal cube, they will have to determine its method of operation and destination via experimentation. Really? Huh. Do you know anything about the size errors? What travel? Really? Uh, whatever. Do you know if I want to send? You do not. What to fill? You do not. Whatever then. Alright. Juliet? Updated my journal. Uh, yeah, I heard that the size is enough. No, is that true? Raffle, hmm, yeah, I thought I might have heard that name before. I know not the truth thing, but I have heard such a rumor. Thou may wish to ask Kimaski Alton that very same question. They are half sisters, you see. Are they? Interesting. Nothing about the sand, and nothing new anyway. Why am I not wearing those earrings? I'm gone. I could have Anna robbed the place pretty much. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. I kinda like the girls around here. Yo, uh, Marissa. Updated my journal. Um, pum, 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 pum. Okay, let's go talk to, uh, Thingy over there. Kimaski, that's it. Oh, it's you again. Just can't get enough of me, huh? Yeah, can you teach uh, more some new uh, words? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Awesome. I heard it precise. Yeah, I was told you were seen sneaking away from Mrs. Chambers recently. Is it connected with a missing veil somehow? Who told you? <sighs> if I was there, Burke, I didn't take a filthy veil. Search my room if you like. Catch you sniffing at my breeches, though. I'll see to it that you never allowed in here again. Or would anyone ever sniff at your bridges? It's me, someone's nicked more than a few pair of them though. My favorite little bazooka too. The iron starts. Hmm. Yeah, I heard your precise size half sister, is that true? Yes, I'm related to the chubby, mewling, hook nosed daydreamer. Same father, different mothers. So? Uh, I heard that size says is Ralph's daughter, is that true? If I say no, yes. Done. Um Eves, do you know anything? Or maybe I can get Done. my new party member to tell you a story.
for eyes. I'm not sure if it's eyes or ears. Yes, I have come to trade in. I fall from grace. Do you have a story to trade? Oh, okay. I'm gone. Um, where is Kasai Saris? Kasai, are you Rafa's daughter? What? Why you hear such a thing? Just a rumor, that's all. Ridiculous, I think. I know it that the wicked hag was my mother. Let's stop bothering me about it. Who is your mother then? I don't know, right? My father raised me. I never knew her, but do I look like a night hack to you? Well, there's the skin and the eyes and maybe the teeth too. Perhaps we'll speak later, but I'm no longer in the mood. Farewell. Ah, damn it, talk to her sister again. She's denying it, sis. Yeah. I am Kasai's half sister. I was hoping you could find me out if Kasai is really Rafa's daughter. My journal. Normally, normally I'd be loath to help you like this, but I have a feeling it's upset that flirting, preening, doxy, good and well. Time to ask our father. He's a powerful cambion, so she ought to be able to call him right then and there. Don't get your answer, cambion. Yes, cambion. Did you hear me the first time? You all stopped up with the last of your brains running out of them? I'm asking what one is. My, you're clueless. A half fiend, work, sort of like you. But you're half done, I think. You smell it at any rate. Better than half you, Kimaski. You wish you were half Kimaski. So, even if you ended up with a goat's bum on your shoulders, be better than that scarred up face of yours. That's enough. All right. Kasai? Kasai, I talked to Kimaski. She told me she's your half sister and that you're that Ravel's your mother. That that hells how loath that woman or would you even believe that sort of tribe? She says that you deny it, and in fact may not know it, but that it's true. She said you could ask your father. He would tell you. Updated my journal. Kasai stares at you silently for a time. Give me a moment. She turns from you and begins to mother softly. Ash seems to shimmer around her slightly and fills with a coppery smell, like warm blood. Uh, yeah, strangely, strike him over here. He leaned towards Kasai, attempting to hear what she's muttering. Oh, Gazana Nel, banished prince of Ifak, Marquis of the Bloody Shadow, my father, hear me for I call upon you. Yes, beloved father, it is I, Kasai Saris, who will bid you answer me one question, a question I've asked you time and time again. Yes, beloved father, I cannot bear to have another ask me and not know myself. You must tell me. I have asked for nothing save this. Tell me, I beg of you. Ye yes, yes, beloved, I understand. I thank you. Farewell. Yeah, lean back. Pretend you heard nothing. Kasai re remained turned away from you for a moment before finally coming to face you. I did not want to believe that the wicked hag may have been my mother. I have, lost, I have lived long, I did, do not appear to age, and have disturbing dreams sometimes. But still, I do not wish to be the inheritor of the evil she caused, nor draw the lady's gaze as my mother did. Such evil things she did. Then what you know of her, will you? I heard she would pose impossible riddles to riddles, to people. Riddles she could answer, but no one else could. She would devour the person if they answered incorrectly, or leave them dangling in her horrifying gardens as examples to all. Those few who somehow escaped she tormented in their dreams, riding them like steeds, breaking their wills, and hurling their souls into the colorless oblivion of the grey wastes. Her magic was said to be beyond anything most have, had ever seen. It was imagina imagination woven, woven from nightmare and given substance. Stone and solid shapes bent to a will like soft clay, 
the laws of the plains would bend beneath her feet, and from nothing she could weave illusion, and from illusion weave realities that could horrify and kill and confound. Clon? She was a mistress of all the dark arts, mistress and master of them all. She hung to the governor that dared to quote such a law to her with shadows that devoured him. All but his tongue, his fingers and the flesh of his face. She turned mercy killers inside out and shattered buildings of those who displeased her. Terrible, terrible powers were at her command. She changed her shape like water, which used it to destroy some of some form amusement to steal knowledge from others. She was a monster, like all that has been spawned from the grey waste. In the end, she threatened to open the cage and let the fury of the planes come rolling in like a wave. Fortunately, she did not succeed. She existed solely to cause malice. I don't know if she's dead, but I know now that she was my mother. Oh, that I had tears that I would weep with sorrow. Try and comfort her. Just leave me be. I'll be fine. I just need some time to think about it. That's all. Alright, but I need to give I need you to give me a piece of herself. Pardon? The poor Kito Ravel's maze is a piece of her. And you are of her blood. It's close enough. You intend to seek her out? What what would you need of me? Your blood, most likely. Only a drop or two, I'm sure. But you have some way to carry it? A piece of cloth, like a handkerchief or something, yeah? Yes, here. My journal. Kasai takes a handkerchief and gingerly pricks the tip of her finger on one of her fangs. After letting several drops of blood soak into the cloth, she returns it to you. You're placing yourself in grave danger, you know. Even if the stories of my mother are greatly exaggerated, this is horribly powerful and completely evil. Good luck. Yes, so I've heard. Thanks and farewell. Like my skills have nice, nice, Morty. Little Mort. Yeah, um. Lewis. Um, still not clear. Alright, we have that taken care of. Still looking for, um, yeah, those things. Ask Nanny. Ask Nanny. I did ask Nanny. I didn't get a new clue. Maybe it's not too many. Yeah, there's Nanny. Hey Nanny, uh, sorry about all the crowd around you. I'm gone. I'm gone. Uh, yeah, Nanny. Um, yeah, K um, Kibaski said someone's been taking things from room, room 2. Have you seen anything else? Oh, that's right, you know. Once I saw a man sneaking out of Kamaski's room while she was talking to a patron. I watched the front doors all the day, but he never ever left. Isn't that odd? I think that he could have made it out of the window, and so I never figured out where he went. I don't think he could have made it out of the window. And then I totally forgot about it. Weird, huh? See, it is Lewis. I knew it. I just didn't have the right. I had to talk to the right person. Yeah, Lewis? Yeah. We saw you leave, leaving the room, uh, Lewis. You think? Think? 
How could you be so alarmingly rude, so ludicrously presumptuous as to spout forth such an accusation without being, uh, without being absolutely certain of your charges? How dare you, in person, best you could? Why are you to? Let's lose rails and curses, his dra drawers open and close. You know there's a small bundle of crimson cloth tucked alongside the small clothes. The repeated opening and closing of the amar drawers makes it difficult to <laughs> makes it difficult to grab, however. Make a try. You simply cannot move your hand quickly enough to snatch the crimson cloth from within the whisk. The most you would accomplish would be getting your fingers crushed. Yeah, mere dexterity. Yeah, I need more dexterity. Give me the cloth. Shan't, won't, never. Pull open the door. The door remains closed. You hear it puffing and wheezing from the exertion. Go away, you barbarian. Try it again. Try it again. Bang and wine, then. Oh, please stop that rubbish. It's quite tiresome and transcend all known meanings of the word boredom. Bang and wine some more. Stop, how do you see dull? You make me quite drowsy. Huh. More bagging and whining. The amour yawns, exposing the crimson cloth where it rests snugly beside some undergarments. You dart your hand in and seize it before the drawer can close itself. Tucking it away, you notice that it is perfumed with light, exotic, and most pleasant fragrance. Damn it, you rogue, blackguard, blackguard, scoundrel. You give it back this instant. That's not yours. It's an ink exceedingly personal garment that belongs to a lady of this establishment. They would not appreciate you fumbling their private things. Ah, but this is a right for you, you pervert. I'm not doing anything so criminal and malicious as you are. I mean, you'd be soaking in sensations necessary to my growth as an individual. Yeah, I sure did. So... We have the veil, a sentence veil, sentence veil. So it's probably Vivian sent on the veil. So let's go to Vivian first. Vivian? Ah, there you are. Yes, I found this in this red veil you sent. Yeah. My journal. Oh, how simply wonderful. She takes the veil from your hands, mutters a few words over it, and returns it to you. She shakes out her crimson hair, and in moments you are surrounded by the most intensely exotic and arousing scent you have ever had, ever had the pleasure of smelling. That smells great. It does, does it not? Well, I suppose she should be wanting a reward now. Step closer to me, scarred one. Sure. Phew! Vinegar or embalming fruit? Here, I will remove this smell from you. There. How is that? People should be less eager to avoid conversation with you now. Thanks, Vivian. Charisma plus one. All right. I'm gone. Done. Now go there. Where are you? There you are, Marissa. I have your revealed, Marissa. Of course, here you are. You hold the crimson veil before you, feel her take it from your hands. Ah, yes, much better. Two shining points of red light appear before you as she opens her eyes. So that's what you look like. Perhaps, perhaps I would have been better off with my eyes shut. Yeah, what's that for, Tom? Uh, yeah, the only kind of reward I could get from her, the limb limb into a statue. Yeah, I suppose I could. Why? Do you happen to be carrying a limb limb? Yes, I am. Right here then. Marissa takes a happy little creature from your hands. It chirps happily. Pew, pew. Unaware of its impending fate. With an eerie flash of sickly red light, the gleeful limb limbs chirping come to an abrupt end and disquieting stop. Marissa places the limb limb, now a thing of cold and heavy stone, into your hands. Thanks, Marissa. Goodbye. So, anything left here? Karina needs a friend. Fetch you by a files. No, I'm done in the brothel, I think. Which, uh, which is a nice point to end this episode. So, thank you for watching. 
please subscribe, like, and comment. And I will see you next time for more Planescape Torments.